Welcome to the beautiful north woods of Minnesota. This weekend I'm at my off-grid cabin. And as you guys know, I really don't do product reviews on this channel. Sometimes it can just get to be a little bit too much. But I was lucky enough that the manufacturers of one of the products I was really interested in reached out to me and said, hey Terry, would you be willing to give this product a try up at the off-grid camp? And I said, absolutely, send it my way. Well, I had heard lots and lots of good things about the Blue Eddy, but within five minutes of it arriving at my house, I discovered something that nobody's talking about. And to be honest, I was a little bit surprised. So on this video, we're gonna talk about operating the Blue Eddy in a cold environment. And if the downside of lithium batteries is worth the extra cost. So the day that this arrived, it was negative six degrees Fahrenheit. And I got home from work and the delivery driver had set it out on my porch where it sat for hours. So needless to say, the lithium cells were at negative six degrees Fahrenheit. So I brought it into the house, hooked it up to charge because it was at 60%. So my Blue Yeti arrived today and it was sitting outside when I pulled up in the driveway. And of course, the first thing I want to do is get it unboxed, turn it on and go through the options on it. Well, the first thing I did was plug in the charger and I immediately got a fault sensor. I'm just gonna power it on by pushing and holding the power button. That will initialize the... As you can see, I am getting a fault signal. So if I operate the touch screen and go through the options of potential issues, there I see it. If you can see that dot that's lit up right there, that, this indicates a BMS temperature error. So my inclination right off the bat without looking further is that the unit is just simply too cold for operation. I just needed to let it come up to the charging standards and in the directions when you look in the specs it clearly says um, where it lists the over voltage, under voltage, all that kind of stuff. It tells you hey uh, it needs to be 32 degrees. So that's on me for not reading the directions completely from front to back and reading all of the specs. However, it should be noted that even at negative six, it would still power on and it would still discharge. But when I went to plug it in to bring it up to full capacity, um, it wouldn't charge and I kept getting a BMS fault. Well, the BMS is the battery maintenance system. And what I came to find out was that these units will not charge under 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And the reason for that is because of the type of batteries that they use. Now the Blue Eddy uses top of the line industry batteries. These are lithium ion phosphate. You've probably heard all about them. They are the newest thing, the best technology that's out there and available right now. But with that great power capacity and the ability to cycle so many repeated times, there are a couple drawbacks. And one of them is weight. And the other one is uh, charging during cold temperatures. The, the best thing about these batteries is with the Blue Eddy, you can cycle and charge this about 3,500 times down to a depth of discharge of about 10%, which means you can use 90% of the capacity of this bank down to 10% about 3,500 times. And then not, not only is the unit still working, but it only goes... It, it is only diminished to an 80% capacity. So you can run this generator eight to nine years if you charged it every single day, which most people aren't going to. So conservatively, you could use this for 10 years and at the end of 10 years, it would still have 80% of its charging capacity. That is incredible, absolutely amazing. But one thing I don't like about this touchscreen, as good as it is, it is really hard to see in daylight. In fact, it's almost impossible. And when you're going, and for instance, when I was setting up those solar panels, I had to set, I had to make sure that my DC input source was on uh, PV for the panels rather than the car. But it was so bright out that I could barely even see those options in order to set those settings. Now, I'm not going to get into the technical aspects of this just because number one, I'm not an electrical engineer and I just can't do it justice. But if you're really interested in the volts and the amps and the guts of this product, I'm gonna point you over to a YouTube channel that I follow and it's called Do It Yourself Solar with Will Prouse. And I'll put a link, in fact, I'll try to put a link on the screen. 
that guy does reviews on stuff and he I don't know what he does for a living um, clearly something in engineering or electrics or something the guy probably works for NASA I don't know but he is smart anyway uh, take a look at his review of this if you want more of the technical side of it but for me going up to the north woods of Minnesota I don't really care how many volts and watts and this and that I just want to know if it's going to work for my needs. So that's what we're going to do this weekend. I'm going to use it for all the things that I would use in the shack and see if you can keep up. When I first hooked up my solar panels, I told people on my YouTube channel that the one thing I really wanted to do was to run a microwave. And I had several people tell me that there was no way I was going to be able to run it because they've tried it with their batteries and it just depletes it so quickly that they can't charge their batteries fast enough and it's just been a disaster. Well, we're going to see if this will do it. If this will run a microwave, that's the difference between surviving and thriving in my, in my book. Winter is fine when I have wood stove going all the time, but in the summer, if I just wanted to heat up a cup of coffee or a thing of ramen noodles or reheat leftovers from last night's dinner, I don't want to have to start the camp stove, use more resources, take the time to do it, if I could just pop it in the microwave for a minute and 30 seconds. So we're going to check that out. The other thing I'm really curious about is uh, my wife likes to come up to the shack, but she doesn't love not having a shower and being able to get ready in the mornings. And one thing that she really tasked me with was trying to figure out how she could run a hair dryer up here. Now, originally I thought I would probably run it off of a gas generator just for the 10, five to 10 minutes it would take her. But really, who wants to go out and start a gas generator? What if it's raining out? Do you really want the noise? And with the price of premium gas nowadays? Are you kidding? I really didn't want to have to do that. Well, let's take a look at the, uh, the external. You know, the one thing I really liked about this is how rugged it is. You know, I see this is not going to just stay in the cabin all the time. This is going to be in and out in the van when I'm camping, when I'm doing van traveling, as well as when I'm off grid and in the cabin. So I appreciate the fact that it has these, these two sturdy handles, which they need because this thing weighs about 60 pounds. But to be honest, my uh, regular generator probably weighs around the same. I'd have to weigh it to find out, but I'm, I'm, it's pretty heavy as well. All right, well, let's go over the capacity of this thing, which is really cool because we have six 110 AC outlets. This is where you're going to plug in your refrigerators, your... Um, you know, your computers, your TV, fans, things like that. You can also run all of your shop tools off of this. I've used a skill saw. You can use table saws. Pretty much anything that you can run with a 2,000 watt generator, this machine will power. The only difference is with a gas generator, as long as you keep putting gas in, you keep having power. With this, once you get through 2,000 watt hours, you have to recharge it. So that's one of the drawbacks of this. But the coolest thing about this is the inverter inside here is a pure sine wave inverter, which means you can use all of your sensitive electronics, like your laptops, your TVs, things like that, that really need uh, very little harmonic distortion. Um, so you don't be afraid to use your expensive items on this. I'm looking forward to, to that. So we also have uh, four USB ports. These are... are uh, 5 volt, 3 amps, which aren't the fastest. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't have a 5 amp charger, but, you know, that's okay. We also have a power distribution, uh, or like a USB-C, 60 watts. You've got your barrel connectors. You've got your 12 volt plug, so you can run like your car, like your uh, car refrigerator off of that, or anything that would have that cigarette style plug off of that. And as well, we have a high output uh, aviation plug as well. And the, the neat thing about the aviation plug is it comes with a lot of adapters. So there's five different ways you can actually charge this. Now I live in a cold environment, which means I have to be very careful. I just can't leave this outside um, in the wintertime charging with solar. So in order to use my solar, I would have to bring that inside where it's above 32 degrees, which is simple, which is simply just running uh, my solar panel wires from my charge controller into this. So certainly can be done, but for my particular instance, um, just something I would have to take care of. Not only do they have 17 ports, but they also have these wireless charging stations for your cell phone. Like, how nice is that, right? 
just walk by, set it up there, and if your cell phone is capable of, of charging wirelessly, no cords, no hassle, uh, just awesome. There's a spot for, for two phones. Um, two 15 watt charging stations. Perfect. You know, the other nice feature on Blue Eddy, and that's one thing I noticed was they really put a lot of thought into the R&D of this unit. Even having like the dust covers, like a lot of the solar generators out there don't have dust covers. You know, the idea is to use this in environments that are probably out in the wild and probably not a sterile environment. So just having that extra protection to keep like dust and dirt and pollen and everything out of the circuitry is just one little extra step that Blue Eddy did. You know, you can tell a lot about a company when they take care of the little things. Now I mentioned the dust covers on the charging ports, but even right down to the little cord wrap, I mean, and they provide a bag just to keep all of your essentials handy. Like they've just really thought about how to make this a pleasant experience for the consumer. And you know, that's, that goes a long way when not only does the product work, but is it fun and easy to use? Now we talked about charging the Blue Eddy. You can charge it through solar panels and you can actually use up to 700 watts of solar panel power to charge this. And it will charge in about three hours. Um, you can also plug it into a wall outlet and that'll charge in about four, four and a half hours. You can charge it through your car plug. And, and you can even charge it from another lead acid battery. So today I'm just using a 100 watt portable solar panel to try to charge this up. I really just wanted to experiment with how cold it could be before this thing would stop taking a charge. And kind of what I'm learning is as long as the unit is warm and the batteries are warm, it's not a problem. But when the battery cells get down below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, that's when this thing will not take a charge anymore. And that really can be an issue if you're living in a cold environment. I know if uh, I'm off, I know that if I'm at the off grid cabin and I want to go out fishing all day long, uh, the cabin can get really cold if the fire's not going. And if I came back and was not able to charge this through the day through the solar, uh, that could be an issue. Or if you were living in a van and you were in a cold environment and you left the van to go on a, a hike or something and the van got down below 32 degrees, you're not going to be able to continue charging in your app settings. But, you know, that's one of those things where I, there's so many good things about this that I can live with that. Considering this unit, here's some of the things that it can do. You can run a CPAP machine for about 43 hours, a laptop for about 28 a TV for 50, over 15 hours, a coffee maker, about two and a half hours, a microwave, 1.7 hours, a hair dryer, a 1600 watt hair dryer, 1.1 hours. Now that's one of the things that really surprises me is that anything I can run with a gas generator, I can run with this Just machine. Because I'm not really trying to charge the unit, I'm merely trying to see if it will charge uh, in a cold environment. Okay, so it looks like the input voltage is 24.2 volts. Don't let the sunshine fool you. It's negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit today, so it's fairly cool. But I just wanted to confirm a couple of things about operating this in cold temperatures. I'm just gonna go hook up the solar quick. When I was up at the cabin and I tried charging the Blue Eddy with my 100 watt solar panel, it showed that it was bringing in 24 volts, but no wattage at all. And it really stumped me and I thought maybe it was because of the cold temperature. So we are well underneath the operating capacity of the Blue Eddy, meaning it's not supposed to charge under 32 degrees Fahrenheit. However, the unit has been in the house, so the unit itself should be warm for a while. So we're gonna make this fast. What I found out was that you are unable to charge the Blue Eddy with one 100 watt panel because you need a voltage of 35 volts. Now my Renogy 100 watt panels 
I think are like a 17 and a half voltage. So there's a two things to consider is number one, you will not be able to charge the Blue Eddy with just one 100 watt panel. You will need at least 35 volts. So what I need to do is I need to have two 100 watt panels. The other thing to consider is that I cannot hook them in parallel or I still will be under the 35 volts. But if I hook them in series, that should allow me to have 35 volts exactly. So I am right on the bubble right now with, with these two panels. So let's see if it's gonna work. So when I, if it will charge, when I plug in this XT90 connector, okay, ready? One, two, three, it should fire up. Uh, I'm not plugged in yet. One, two, three, okay, the panels are plugged in and the unit did automatically fire up from a off position. All right, can you, can you see that screen? Okay, we're gonna go into settings we're on photovoltaic. And right now, what's our temperature? Let's look at our data. Right now we are 64 degrees, so we are still within operating temperature. All right, right now I am showing 32, 31, 33 volts coming in. I do have a shadow on my panel. Input current of a 10th of an amp and input current three watts right now well and to be honest the panels are just i just kind of threw them up here for this experiment the point i'm trying to make here is i originally thought i could just use the blue eddy with like a 100 watt foldable panel or a suitcase and clearly that is not going to be an option for me so if you're just gonna so if you're thinking about just pulling into a campsite and throwing out the 100 watt foldable panel you're going to be disappointed because it's not going to charge the Blue Eddy. You're either going to need a 200 watt panel or two 100 watt panels. So that's a pretty important thing to think about that I haven't heard people talking about. And we're going to see if this will last through the weekend. I have no doubt that it's going to run this shop back. But the question will be is how much power can we use this weekend before we've depleted this entire unit? So it looks like this drew about uh, eight to 900 watts, which is a lot, and I expected it to be a lot. But for just a quick spot cleaning, you know with the big German Shepherd, you have to stay on top of the fur management, otherwise it just gets gross. So uh, just for a quick, um, like I said, spot cleaning, yeah, it worked nice. And so much more power than my Ryobi, which I've always been disappointed in. So, so far so good. I know this isn't the only time we're going to use this this weekend. I'm sure we're going to use it quite a bit. Watch your beak. Right. Well, I do like toast in the morning. But it's always hard to try to get it just perfect over the fire. So if I can make this toaster run with the Blue Eddy, I'm going to be very happy. But I would expect that this to draw a lot of wattage, so it may work once, but we'll see how much we have left over. Turn on the Blue Eddy, or as I like to call it, the Blue Beast. And we're at 97% it looks like. AC on on the Blue Eddy. So we are drawing 850 watts. So about the same as the shop vac. See how long this takes though. That'll be the question. Ninety-five percent. Still running about eight hundred and forty watts. Should be popping any minute. All right, so the toast just popped up on its own, but I wanted it a little bit more brown. I took this toaster out of our storage. And um, so I wasn't really sure what the heat setting was at, but just to show you that this is actually making toast, even though I would eat it at this stage, I put it in just for a little bit longer. I don't know how to cancel this now that, all right. Whew, it's hot. 
I'm gonna unplug this before I stick that knife in there. Probably a good idea, huh? All right, 94% on the Blue Eddy. Some home canned butter. Which could have been softer, actually. It's been out in the cold. All right, there you have it. The Blue Eddy makes toast. Ready for this? This is the thing that everybody said could not be done. We're gonna find out. We go ahead and power on the Blue Eddy. We're gonna use, you know, the other thing I thought I'd mention too is the Blue Eddy has an MPPT uh, charge controller built in so that when you're charging with solar panels, you can actually get the, the most bang for your buck out of your panels. All right, I don't know if you can see this or not, but we are at 90%. We're gonna go ahead and turn the AC on. So we have power to our unit. And as you can see, the microwave has powered on. And we put our coffee mug with hot water, or we put our coffee mug with water in it. And let's see what would, uh, two minutes per se? Oops, oh, two minutes. Okay, well it starts. We are using, let's see. 1,328 watts, 1,350, 1,327. Well, that's interesting because that's a 700 watt microwave. So I thought that would only draw about 700 watts, but we're running 1,328, 1,318, 1,350, but it's working. We're halfway done. We've lost 1% on the, the Blue Eddy. I think I'm just gonna call this thing the Blue Beast. All right, so it ran it, but did it make it hot? Oh yeah, I don't know, can you see that steam coming out of there? Oh yeah, she's hot. She is hot. Wow, oh, I'm excited, I'm getting really excited. As you can see, I don't know if you can see or not, you might have to take my word for it. We are at 88%, we were at 90, so we used 2%, so we used 1% of the battery per minute. So, all right, so we are at 87%, we're gonna go to settings, and we're gonna go to DC input, and we're gonna switch that to car, and then we should be able to see, yep, oops, yep, now you can see 117 watts we're bringing in right now. I don't know if you can see that with the sun, which way the sun is shining. All right, well on the menu tonight, since River didn't catch any fish, we're gonna have some jalapeno cheddar goose brats, some Brussels sprouts, and some homemade sauerkraut. So as you can see, we have the Blue Eddy running, and we are gonna cook the Brussels sprouts in the microwave, and I think we can probably microwave wattage one th seven minutes. So we have to cook these for seven minutes. Oh, this would be interesting. So I've got the YouTube light running. I'm charging up some GoPro batteries. So I just put the Brussels sprouts in for four minutes. And we were we are at 89% on the Blue Eddy. I don't know if you can see that screen or not. It's just it's not cooperating with the camera. So we're gonna let those Brussels sprouts cook. We're gonna let these sausages fry, and then we're gonna plug in the toaster and make some more toast. You know what, let's get crazy. Let's do the microwave and the toaster at the same time and see what kind of response we get out of the Blue Eddy. Right, toaster's plugged in. We're gonna have to flip these halfway through. All right, so we're drawing 2,000 watts. How is that possible? 2,065 watts. We may go over here between the toaster and the microwave. We're at 87%. Oh, my sausages are burning. My brats are burning. Doing too many things at once. We're at 2,000 watts still, and it is, it is still hanging in there. 2,051, 2,065. I think to be fair, I think we're gonna Cancel the toast. All right, we're gonna cancel the toast. Now we're down to 1300 watts on the microwave. All right, 
Four minutes done in the Brussels. Are they done? Oh gosh, they're actually done. All right, let's do the toast. We're at 83% of the Blue Eddy. So right now we're running another 850 watts for the toaster. Hmm, wow, and four watts for the light and the GoPro batteries. Oh, GoPro batteries are charged up. We can pull those off. I just wanted to mention one more thing. So I was gonna use my phone as a hotspot and remembered that I left my charging cord in the van, in the cold. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna use this wireless charger. Look at this, watch this. Ready? And we are charging. I love that. Love that. How easy is that? After all weekend, we are at 69%. We're going to do another deep vacuum tomorrow. So I know we'll use more, but there's no way we're going to burn this thing out this weekend. I wanted to do a little bit more solar testing with the Blue Eddy outside in the cold temperatures. But when I got home last night, I charged it up to 100%. So now I have to deplete some of the battery capacity so that I can actually tell if the solar is charging in the cold temperatures or not. So I thought, well, we talked about the hair dryer. Let's give that a, a whirl and maybe give it like a five minute test just to see what it would really take. All right, so five minutes and we are at 94%. I had this crazy idea of different uses that I could put this Blue Eddy through. And uh, I was thinking about just doing something weird. And so I took a can of pickled beets and I decided that I was gonna make some beef, beet jerky. Get it, beet jerky? Anyway, these are pickled beets. I have no idea if this is gonna turn out but I thought just with the little tang of the pickling spice that these may taste really good dehydrated as little chips. So anyway, we're gonna try some beet jerky. But I thought, why not do it with the Blue Eddy? So I've been trying to think of uses, so I've been trying to think of things to, to try out with the Blue Eddy and how they could correlate to being out in the woods or off grid or living in the van and things like that. You know, one of the things that I like to do is go out foraging for wild edibles, especially like mushrooms. The thing with mushrooms are some of them can be pretty fragile. And one of the ways that I preserve them is to dehydrate them. But if I'm out in the woods for a couple days, they're all going to get yucky by the time I can get home and put them in the fridge or put them in the dehydrator. So I thought, well, let's kill two birds with one stone and let's try to make some beet jerky and see if we can do it with the Blue Eddy to see if... I know it will start it but will it run long enough to dehydrate a batch, which could be hours. 670 watts. So with 2000 watt hours of power, you know, we're looking at about three hours, give or take, of running this. Well, let's see how she does. All the surface moisture is definitely dried off and they're starting to get a little bit of a rubbery texture to them. But clearly not beet jerky yet. So one thing I've noticed after just about an hour into this little test drive is that we are at 82% power on the blue edge. And I've been noticing that the watt indicator has been cycling on and off. And I think what is happening is the dehydrator, when it is up to temperature, the fan just blows and there you can see it clicked back on. So I think being one hour into this and being at 82%, you know, I think that's going to be a little bit longer than I even expected. I think I was thinking about three hours and that's going to give us probably about four, maybe five. So this actually may work. So there you have it. My initial thoughts on the Blue Eddy AC 2000P. 
So in summary, a couple things that I really wasn't aware of that really makes you think if this is the right unit for you if you live in a cold environment. And that would be the fact of the limitations of the lithium ion phosphate batteries that the unit can only charge if it's 32 degrees Fahrenheit or warmer, that the ambient storage temperature should be at least 14 degrees Fahrenheit. And the issue of the 35 volts for charging through solar, meaning that you would have, at le you'd have to have at least two 100 watt panels or one 200 watt panels wired in series. So those are a couple things that I have not heard anybody else talk about on any of the reviews that I watched. And so I'm left with the question of, do I still feel that this unit is a good purchase compared to an equal wattage gas generator? And right now, Blue Eddy has these on sale for $14.99 for the model that I was using. And if you look at a well-known red gas generator that rhymes with Rhonda, I think you're gonna run probably about a grand for that. So with a $500 difference for basically a unit that can do the same thing, I have to go to the comparisons about which are better and which are, about what are the pros and what are the cons. Now obviously with a gas generator, as long as you put gas in it, you, you continue to have power, unlike the solar generator, which once you deplete the 2000 watt hours, you have to recharge it. But there's something to be said for not having to run outside all the time and turn a generator on and off. If it's raining, if it's bad weather, if it's winter time, maybe you live in a real dry environment where you have to have like a spark arrestor on your muffler because there's a chance for like wildfire or just the Considering the price of premium gas, oil changes, how many times it's not gonna start, you're gonna follow the plugs, all the issues that come with gas generators versus knowing that this unit is gonna last you at least 10 years. So if I, if I really think about which I would prefer, Hands down, I prefer the Blue Yeti. Even with the limitations of the lithium ion phosphate batteries, just being able to have that power source in my home. Um, if I wanna run ex extension panels out to solar panels outside, fine, I'll make that work. But being able to move it from inside my van where I can use it without carbon monoxide, without the noise bothering other people in the area, it's just a real handy portable system that meets all of my needs and, and able to do all of the same things that a 2000 watt gas generator can do. So I have to say, I am really impressed with this unit. It is definitely gonna make my life easier at the off-grid cabin. It's gonna make van camping and van traveling just a whole new world. I do plan to put solar panels on the roof of the van and I may invest in a 200 watt foldable panel. I, I'm just not sure. But in summary, I really, really was impressed with the Blue Eddy. All of the reviews that I've seen on it have been really favorable. Um, I experienced no issues whatsoever that weren't within the specs of the unit. If I would have read the directions, if it was in my budget, would I buy it? Absolutely yes. I'm really impressed with what it can do and how it met all of my needs. Anyway, if you found something helpful in this video or learned something that you didn't know or thought maybe something would be helpful for others to know, would you go ahead and hit the like button or even just leave a comment and let me know what your thoughts were? Well, I hope you did learn something from the video and as always, we will see you soon.